Do you find it difficult to motivate yourself to study consistently? Do you feel like your other commitments get in the way of your tech studies? Do you find yourself getting distracted every time you sit down to try to get some work done? If you want to break into the tech industry, it's important that you spend a lot of time learning new skills and improving yourself every day because that is how you stand out from all the other applicants and land that dream job that you've been looking for. If you find it difficult finding the time or motivation to actually sit down and study, then congratulations, you're in the right place. Because by the end of this episode, I'm going to share with you my tactics and strategies that I've used to overcome procrastination and increase my focus, which has helped me to develop a successful career in the cloud industry. Hi, my name is Fayomi, and I'm a senior solutions architect with years of experience in the cloud industry. I'm also the creator of Cloud Career Mentor, where we help aspiring tech professionals get well-paid jobs in the cloud industry through high quality courses and mentorship. When I was looking to break into the tech industry over seven years ago, I also struggled with getting the motivation to work on my tech skills. It wasn't until I discovered the three strategies of motivation that I was able to study consistently build up my tech skills and get a job in the tech industry. And now I'm going to share these strategies with you so you can accelerate your tech career. You ready? Let's begin. The first strategy I practice to increase my focus and motivation is what I call ruthless prioritization. A big mistake I see tech beginners make that seriously affects their ability to focus on building their tech skills is that they have way too many interests and priorities. I was talking to a cloud beginner the other day who wanted to get into the cloud industry and they were feeling demotivated because they felt like they didn't have enough time in the day to study and build their tech skills. So wanting to know more, I asked him what his days look like. He told me that on most days he goes to work, then he has Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in the evening, and in his free time, he would hang out with his friends and family. He also enjoyed relaxing by watching Netflix and playing video games. Then when he had some free time in between all of these activities, he would try to study and build up his tech skills. After hearing this, I immediately knew why he struggled to study. Can you guess why? Well, it's quite simple, really. The reason he struggled to focus is because he put building his tech skills at the very bottom of his priority list. His priority list went like this. One, work. Two, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Three, hanging out with friends and family. Four, Netflix and video games. And five, improving his tech skills. The reality is that he would always try to study at the end of the day, at like 10 p.m. after a hard day of work and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or hanging out with his friends or whatever. At this point, his brain was already fried and tired and trying to work on your tech skills when your brain is in this state is a recipe for disaster. When your brain is tired, it will find it really difficult to take in new information. Learning tech skills is already a challenge at the best of times and trying to do it when your brain is tired is just not going to work. My solution to him was to practice ruthless prioritization. This means that you need to look at how you spend your time every day and prioritize the activities that will get you closer to your goal. My personal philosophy is that in life, we need to prioritize. And that for me, I can only focus on three things. By focusing on three priorities, you can really dedicate yourself to becoming really good at them. I'll share with you a story from my own life to illustrate this point. Many years ago, when I was a beginner looking to break into the tech industry, I found that I struggled to get the motivation to study. And even on the occasion where I sat down to build projects, I found that I was too tired to do that. I'd get distracted super easily. I made slow progress towards my tech goals until I made an important decision. And that decision was to only prioritize three things in my life. The first thing I prioritized was my job at the time. This is because London is a very expensive city to live in and I had rent to pay. So it was really important for me to have a job even while building my tech skills on the side. My second priority was to build up my tech skills and learn as many technologies as I could. I knew that the more time I could spend on improving my tech skills, the better my chances of getting that job offer. And so anytime that I wasn't at work, I was completely dedicated to building those skills. My final priority was split between going to the gym and spending time with family and friends. This is because getting exercise is really great for improving your physical and mental health and spending time with family and friends is a great way to recharge your batteries and generally enjoy life. Everything else was basically squeezed around those top three priorities. 
Once I did that, I noticed an improvement in my focus and my motivation around building my tech skills. And the result of this was me becoming good enough to receive that offer letter from an employer. But ruthlessly prioritizing those top three things came with a cost. There were social events that I couldn't attend because I was too busy studying. There were hobbies I had to stop doing because I had to focus. There were entire weeks where all I did was work, study, work, study. Was this the healthiest thing to do? Probably not. But sometimes you need to disappear for six months in order to achieve your goals. Now I've been able to build a successful career in the tech industry and now I get paid a good amount of money, spend a lot of time with family and friends and even have time to make the occasional YouTube video. But the only reason I can do all of this now is because I sacrificed some things early in my career. Listen, I'm not saying you need to ghost your family and friends to chase your tech dreams. What I'm saying is that you need to take a long, hard look at how you spend your time and decide what needs to be prioritized, what things you're going to make time for and what things you're going to have to give up for now. I hope you're picking up what I'm saying here. If you are, please drop a comment saying, I get it, so I can see if you're resonating with what I'm saying. And please give this video a like while you're down there because it really helps the YouTube algorithm know that this is good, high quality content. There is this excellent exercise that has helped me to reframe my thinking around prioritization. Every time you say to yourself that you don't have time for something, replace that by saying that that activity isn't a priority for you. So instead of saying, oh, I don't have time to study, replace that with studying is not a priority for me. This is important because just by rephrasing this statement, you can really rewire your brain. Let me put it this way. If I was to say to you that if you studied and improved your tech skills for only an hour a day, every day for six months, then I would give you a million dollars guaranteed. Would you be able to find time to do this? I promise you that even the busiest person in the world would find an hour a day in 24 hours that they have to study if they knew they would get a million dollars at the end of that six months. This tells me that the problem is not that you don't have enough time, the problem is that you're not making learning a priority. So every time you find yourself saying, I don't have time to study, replace that with studying isn't a priority for me because that's a more truthful statement. Now that you understand the importance of prioritizing your learning, let's move on to a more practical strategy on how you can actually create time for your learning. This leads me very nicely to the second strategy, which is the time creation strategy. A mistake I see a lot of tech beginners make is that they try to find the time to study amongst all of their other life commitments. I made the same mistake too and found that there was always something else I'd rather be doing than studying at any particular time. It wasn't until I realized that I had to stop trying to find the time and instead I had to create the time. Once I realized that it was up to me to create the time, that's when I started making progress. Trying to find the time to study is such a passive activity because it suggests that the time is lost somewhere and you may or may not find it. But when you choose to create the time, it becomes a more active decision and your brain finds interesting ways to help you to create that time. So in my case, at the start of my tech journey, while I was building up my skills, I found it was really difficult to study. I couldn't find the time between work and my other commitments. I was either too busy or too tired or too distracted. But when I decided to create the time, everything changed. I looked at how I spent my time and realized that trying to work in the evenings was just too challenging for me because I would feel tired from a hard day of work. Or that's when stuff would be happening with friends and I'd want to go out. Then an idea came to me. What if I studied before work? I realized that during the weekday, I usually woke up at 7 a.m. and I got ready for work. So I said to myself, what if I woke up at 6 a.m. instead and spent the first hour of the day just working on my tech skills? So I decided to give it a go. And I'm not gonna lie, the first week was really challenging. I found it so difficult to wake up. And even when I did, my brain felt sleepy and groggy. I had to literally drag myself out of bed every day, but I persevered with it. And after a week or two of doing this, something magical happened. Every time my alarm went off at 6 a.m., rather than feeling groggy, I would wake up feeling excited and energized because I knew I had an hour of pure and focused learning time. I began to make a lot more progress because I was working when my brain was fresh. I could focus uninterrupted. After doing this for a couple of weeks, I made more progress in that time than in the previous six months before I started the morning study routine. All of this happened because I decided to create the time to study. 
Have you ever been trying to relax in the evening but you feel guilty because you haven't studied for the day and there's this nagging voice in your head telling you that you need to study? Well, the beauty of studying first thing in the morning is that it freed up my evening to socialize with friends or watch Netflix because I could relax guilt-free because I'd already got my studying done in the morning. Let's move on to my third and final strategy when it comes to getting the motivation to study. And this strategy, I think, is the most important one. But before we get into that, I want to ask you a question. Do you feel frustrated because you feel like you're learning a lot of technologies, but don't feel like you're making any progress towards achieving your goals? Do you want to break into the cloud industry, but are struggling to find a good learning plan to help structure your studies? Well then, you need to download this free guide I created called The Three Simple Steps to Your First Cloud Job. This guide walks you through a tried and tested learning plan you can follow that would help you know exactly what technologies you need to study to improve your chances of getting hired. This plan is based on what I used to break into the cloud industry and what dozens of cloud beginners from all over the world have followed to land tech jobs. Make sure you download this free guide now. Link is in the description. All right. So the third and most important strategy I follow when it comes to motivating myself to study is this. Don't rely on motivation to study. At first glance, this point doesn't really make sense, right? Surely you need motivation to study, don't you? But what if I told you that there was something that worked even better than motivation? This thing I'm going to tell you about is what helped me to learn multiple tech skills, get over 12 tech certifications, and get promoted faster than most of my peers. And trust me, it had nothing to do with motivation. What's this trick I hear you ask? Well, the answer is really simple. Rather than relying on motivation, I relied on discipline. Here's how it works. When I relied on motivation to get anything done, I always ran into a little problem. And that problem was that most of the time I wasn't motivated to study. There was always something better to do. A new show just dropped on Netflix. There was always something better. The reality was when I waited for motivation, my study became really inconsistent. If I was lucky, I'd work on my tech skills maybe once a week and sometimes months would go by without me making any progress. But when I switched to a disciplined approach, everything changed. Here's how it worked. Rather than wait until I felt like it to study, spoiler alert, I rarely ever felt like it, I decided that I was gonna commit to study at least one hour a day, every day, whether I felt like it or not. This changed the game because now I was putting in the work on days when I felt like it and days when I didn't feel like it. By focusing on discipline, I realized that I was making more progress than ever before because I had committed to studying every day and I didn't want to let myself down. Now I need to see that discipline is a really good start. But if you really want to accelerate your learning progress, then you need this one special ingredient. And that ingredient is consistency. Let me ask you a question. When you're studying and learning tech skills, do you think it's better to learn for one hour a day, every day for seven days? Or is it better to learn for seven hours straight, but do that just one day a week? What do you think? Pause the video, put your comment in the YouTube comments. I'm really curious. Personally, I think it's better to study for one hour a day for seven days, and here's why. Most of us lead busy lives and can't commit to one full day of learning. Most of us lack the ability to focus and generally an hour is a sweet spot of focus time. Anything after that and your mind begins to wander and we become distracted. If we only do the work one day a week, it will slow our progress because by the following week, we would have forgotten basically everything we did the last time. By working on it on a daily schedule, it builds up the habits. That means that over time, it becomes easier and easier to study. I remember after the habits set in for me, I started looking forward to the study hour and I would feel restless if I couldn't do it for some reason. This was a huge unlock because before I built in this daily habit, I used to dread studying but once it became a daily habit, then I started to actually look forward to it and enjoyed studying. Trust me, by building a daily habit of studying, it will actually become easier for you to study rather than trying to study when motivation strikes or doing one big chunk once a week or once every couple of weeks, if we're really being honest. Now that you're on board with the idea of building a daily habit of study, the next question I can already hear you asking is this. Hey man, that's all well and good, 
but how do you actually begin building this daily habit? This is a very good question because building a daily habit is actually more difficult than it sounds. So I'm going to share what worked for me and I'm sure it will work for you too. The first thing you need to decide on is what time you're going to dedicate to studying. For example, I found that 6 a.m. was the best time to study because my brain would be the freshest then and it would also be the most quiet in the house. I generally encourage you to choose the morning because the last thing you want to do after a hard day of work is to sit down and try to tackle new information or new challenges. But of course, if the evening works best for you, then choose that. Do whatever works for you. The important thing is to choose a time and commit to it every day. Once you've chosen your time and you want to begin, it's important you start by dedicating only a short amount of time at the beginning. So for the first two to three days of doing this, rather than committing to study for an hour, I want you to commit to studying for only 15 minutes. The reason for this is that when you start this daily routine, the goal at the start is simply to show up at the same time and do some work every single day. So if you choose 6 a.m., I want you to wake up at 6, go to your table or desk, turn on your computer and start learning something. Also for the 15 minutes, I want you to dedicate complete focus to the thing you're learning. Don't check Facebook, don't check LinkedIn, don't check your phone, don't check TikTok. For that 15 minutes, your goal is to focus exclusively on your studies. After the 15 minutes, then you can check all of your social media or whatever you want to do. But for that 15 minutes, be completely focused on what you're learning. I know it sounds easy to study for 15 minutes, right? But trust me, it's harder than it sounds. Once you're regularly doing 15 minutes of deep study for the first two to three days, then you can start to increase your study time to maybe 30 minutes, then 40 minutes. Then by the end of the first two weeks, you should have worked your way up to an hour of focused study. A common mistake people make when trying to build this daily habit is that they try to do an hour straight away. This is the equivalent of going from being someone who's never jogged a day in their life to immediately trying to run a marathon. It's just not going to work out. Trying to do an hour of studying straight away will feel really uncomfortable and you're less likely to succeed this way. When you're building this study habit, definitely start with 15 minute sessions, then work your way up to an hour. One of the things that can really destroy your consistency and your motivation is when you sit down to study and you have to spend the first 15 minutes trying to decide what to study and spend another 10 minutes trying to find the right tutorials. Not only does this waste a lot of time, but it also kills your motivation. By the time you find the right learning materials, your brain has already started to get fatigued. This is a problem I faced early in my career, and this is a problem a lot of tech beginners face today. This is why I created a well-structured and easy to follow program that will help you learn the right technologies and also build high quality projects with these technologies like AWS, Linux, Terraform, CICD, Docker, Python, and so much more. If you're interested in this structured program, then head over to cloudcareermentor.com and sign up today. Not only will you build over 20 high quality projects that employers are looking for, but you'll also be shown how to write about those projects on your resume in a way that attracts the attention of recruiters. And all of this will be done in a supportive community of other learners like yourself trying to achieve the same goals. Not to mention all the mentorship and support you'll receive as part of the program. Just think of how lovely it would be when you no longer have to trawl the internet trying to find good tutorials, when all you need to do is log on to cloudcareermentor.com and have everything you need available straight away. If you want to build skills that employers are looking for, even if you have zero technical experience, then head over to cloudcareermentor.com and sign up today. Today, we've talked about the three main strategies I've used to improve my motivation and focus when it comes to building tech skills. And those strategies are one, ruthless prioritization, two, time creation, three, not relying on motivation. By implementing these strategies, I was not only able to get my first job in the cloud industry, but even after I was hired, I kept with those strategies and kept working on my skills, which allowed me to get promoted quicker and also get a lot more salary raises than a lot of my peers. Let me know which of these strategies you're going to start implementing in the comment sections below. If you're ready to start working on some projects, why not check out this video I made called the best five AWS projects to get an entry-level cloud job. See you in the next video.